Hello and welcome to this video in the first in the series of upgrades for the Creality Ender 3. Now the upgrades I'm going to do on these videos are all upgrades you have to pay for. They're not free printed ones from any internet sites. These are all going to cost you money and what I will do is I will do a before and after comparison with every upgrade um, so we can see the differences that the upgrades make and you can then make a decision whether these are worthwhile upgrades or not uh, for some videos such as this one which is the um, NEMA stepper motor steel rubber vibration dampers for these I will do a test before and after fitting on this one machine for other upgrades I have another Ender 3 which is entirely stock so we'll be able to run the two machines side by side and see if there are any noticeable differences with the upgrades that are done to this machine so the upgrades I'm putting on today as I say are the NEMA 17 stepper motor dampers now I got these from Amazon uh, from CC tree they cost £13.99 and for that you get three dampers and the small screws the M3 screws to do the alterations now I am NOT going to fit the damper to the extruder stepper motor uh, as I do not feel that is necessary I, uh, and I feel it may otherwise cause issues with print quality so without further ado the first thing I'm going to do I am going to get out my sound meter and we are going to run a quick print um, using the standard setup with the sound meter set the same distance away from the printer and we will see what the maximum decibel level is then we will fit the dampers we will redo the same test with the same print and we'll see what the maximum uh, stepper motor noise is from that and then we can decide or you can make an informed decision whether these stepper motor dampers are something you want to buy or something you'd rather save your money and buy some other upgrade So the first thing that you need to do before fitting the dampers is to loosen the belts off. So for the first carriage we will loosen the three nuts that are here to take the, the strain off the belt which will allow us to get to the rear and remove the stepper motor without any issues. So now that those three bolts are loosened we can see that there is plenty of play in the belt 
which will aid you in fitting the damper on the stepper motor at the rear. So as you can see at the rear there are four bolts to remove using an allen wrench which will then move the stepper motor away from its mounting. You will notice on the dampers that two of the holes are tapped ready for receiving the screws that come with the kit to affix it back to the plate. Before fitting the damper you must loosen the two grub screws that are on the cog which will enable you to make sure that the belt is in alignment when you fit the stepper motor back to the frame. If you fit the damper first you will not be able to reach those two grub screws to undo them or do them up. So with the provided screws you screw the damper to the stepper motor. You now reattach the damper to the frame of the printer using two of the original screws that are fixed it to start with. At this stage remembering to move the cog out so it runs in line with the groove in the extrusion to make sure it is parallel front to back and then tighten the grub screws at the rear. Once you are happy that the belt is running parallel with the extrusion you can tighten the two grub screws and then re-tighten the belt at the front and get the correct tension. You may find after fitting the damper that as you push the bed all the way to the rear the frame of the bed actually catches on the stepper motor before it touches the end stop micro switch. Now there are two ways of solving this problem. One way is to move the micro switch further forward on the extrusion therefore actually triggering it before the bed gets all the way back. Or the alternative method that I employ is to loosen the two bolts on the bracket holding a stepper motor in place on the black. Loosen the bolts holding the bracket in place on the front and slide this part in slightly and slide the rear section backwards slightly. Therefore the bed will hit the end stop before it comes all the way back and touches this part of the frame. For either method it will be necessary to fit two T-nuts to the bolts and use shorter bolts so you can slide the T-nuts up and down the extrusion rather than to screw through the pre-tapped hole in the extrusion. This is not necessary on all machines but I think it is important to be prepared for this eventuality. So having checked the belt is now lined up securely with the centre of the channel on the extrusion we will turn our attention to the other stepper motor. Again firstly we need to remove the tension on the belt by loosening the two bolts on here thus removing the tension on the belt allowing us to remove the stepper motor safely. So with the two nuts loosened there is now plenty of play in the whole setup to undo the stepper motor at the rear. To remove the x-axis stepper motor we must first remove the sticker covering the housing. This reveals four small allen bolts which now must be removed to remove the casing from in front of the stepper motor. With the four bolts undone it is just a case of removing the outer housing remembering to hold the stepper motor at the rear so it doesn't fall off and then carefully remove the stepper motor like so. At this point it is also sensible to again loosen the two grub screws on the cog as of course this will need to be slid out to make the alignment correct after moving the stepper motor further away from the frame by adding the damper. 
At this point in the build, I noticed that the two supplied screws for the damper to the stepper motor weren't tightening down enough and were allowing movement on the damper. I solved this simply by fitting a washer between the screw head and the damper to tighten up the screw fully. With the two washers fitted, I was able to remove any play in the damper and able to refit the stepper motor onto the frame. Remembering, of course, to realign the pulley and tightening the grub screws so the belt runs perpendicular down the channel. Then refit the front cover using two of the four original bolts. And for the sake of aesthetics, if you wish, you can refit the QR code sticker to the front of the housing. Now it's just a matter of retightening and tensioning the belt using these two screws and we're ready to test to see if we've made any difference. I suggest at this stage you preheat your bed for PLA and use whichever method of bed levelling you use to make sure that you haven't knocked anything out of alignment or skew while fitting the dampers. After checking and making sure we're happy with the level of the bed, we will rerun the test and see if we have any improvement in noise levels. So I think we can safely say that this is a good modification for the money. It makes the machine much quieter, which is very helpful if it's in a shared room in your house or maybe even your bedroom. Uh, and for the money, I think it's well worth it. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your eye open for future videos in this series, including auto bed levelling, the changing out of the Bowden tube and other things which we will look at both and test in both modified and completely standard machines and see if they're worth the investment to make a difference to your printing. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.